So I figured we'd start with the obvious. All of you that own an Indicubic Chan, you've either been here or you're going to be here. There's no way around it. So, my original cable shorted out. TO sensor error, sensor error, hot end not working. And it's because the end near the hot end bends too much. Just a constant doing this. These are a little teeny tiny. You can kind of see them there. They're like 24 gauge wire. I mean, they're pretty cheap. I get, you know, there's, I don't remember now, two, four, six. I don't know, you can count them. I don't remember, I think there's 24 wires in there. I could be wrong, could be 20, I don't remember. Anyway, so, keep getting the air. You can see by the electrical tape. I made my own. A lot bigger than what you're going to get from any cubic. When I made, I used 18 gauge. Problem with it is at this end, where it goes to the hot end. It has to bend, and with the heavy wires I used, it won't bend. It'll bend back here a little bit, but that's just going to cause it to break here. I used it. Yeah, it worked. It didn't work. I had a lot of issues. So I was like, screw it. Ordered another one from Anycubic. It was 15 bucks. Took almost three months to get here. I ordered it in May. <laughs> um, they told me, oh, they'll have it in 15 to 20 days. Well, then they started blaming the whole COVID thing and shipping and customs it had never even left China until July, I think it was like 15th, I think. This is July 22nd. It left China on the 15th, and I had it, I want to say, Monday, so three days ago, two days ago. So, anyway, so I decided I'm not making the same mistake. I'm not using it the way they designed it. Any cubic made a a major design error in their cable chain. As everybody knows that has one or that will know when they get one, it bends here too much when it comes around this way and then back over. Now I've made some changes to the hot end. I got some different things going on. But what I changed is how it mounts. You can see my cable chain goes up. Goes up this way and then back down. And you can see the different mounts here in white. I made these intentionally in white. My ones I'm going to be using will be black. But I did these in white so you could see them. One thing I want to point out is these screws. They're a bit long. And I'll show you why in a moment that matters. You can see I have it mounted on this side. And this one... I could have flipped it and mounted it on the other side, and it may have alleviated the issues. But these screws were a little bit long. Now, in the, and I'll show you the Thingiverse site where I got them from. He, uh, how do I say it? <laughs> he had nuts on the back side of these. I had the internal, you know, the little inserts that you can melt in with your soldering iron and then just thread in. Worked great for me. But as you can see, as this gets all the way over, and of course my cable is brand new and very stiff, but as it gets all the way over, it just touches the screw. Now get it, if you look down here, it's actually off the bed. It should never go this far. But if those little screws are gone, it would never be an issue. Now you can also see that I have Capricorn tubing on there. And since there's nothing to support it anymore, this zip tie is nothing there than to hold the, the, the PTF for the Capricorn tubing, the Bowden tube. And it can go full length until it clicks. 
back and forth no unnecessary bending now there is still a bend point here but it's a very gradual easy bend then you can see I get zip ties on either end because these little clips that hold the cable chain together they're actually pushing against it pretty hard and they keep popping them out so I zip tied the two ends and again this one's just there for the Bowden tube it's not even tight it's made so it can float around and yes my Bowden tubes a little long it's genetics but anyway let's jump over to where I got it from and his name off the screen but anyway it's Roll Ego he uploaded this in May of 2019 last year there's just two parts there's this part that goes on the hot end and then there's this part that goes over here on the top of the X mount and the way he shows it and you can see here he has massively long screws with these nuts on them not saying that those won't work but that bolts actually going to be in the way I just showed you it's going to be in the way you'll have to cut that off or use the inserts but however you make it work the cable chain has to be on the right side of this and then let's jump over to the other side the hot end he did put it on the other side which I should have done but again he's got these really long bolts sticking out and they are going to hit each other and you're not going to be able to travel all the way over if his bolts were cut off he'd be perfectly fine now this is his version and he also has a zip tie up here holding the Bolden tube. Not sure. Oh, that's his. Oh, heck, what's it called? The, the, the leveling tool. <laughs> so this is where I got it from. One thing is, is there's no comments. Zero make, zero remixes, three apps. Um, it's kind of surprising. I'm actually going to. Actually, I already did. I already tipped him a couple pennies. He has a very short little summary, you know. Doesn't say a whole lot. Is it 100% foolproof? Absolutely not. Let's jump back over there one more time. If my mouse would work. If you watch right here, when it's moving, they definitely still bend. But generally, I print between here and here. Not always, but generally. And if you do come all the way over, obviously that bend gets a little more. It's still greatly reduced compared to the... It was like a Z-bend, but it was closed. It was bending twice, and that's why it kept breaking here. Plus, this one's a lot further back. So if I did have to splice it, which I hope I don't, I could. And yes, I've already ordered another cable after I realized it was going to take three months to get it. I have another spare for $15 on the way. Hope to have <laughs> and never use just as a spare. Um, now, one other thing I did come across. That really got my attention. Um, let me see, is this it? No, oh darn it. I'm going to pause this. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show um, that I just recently came across, didn't even know it existed out there, was this Bike U B1 printer. Yeah, it's bright pink. Don't know why. But whatever. It's an Ender 3. It's a clone of an Ender 3. It's what it is. Except for one huge big difference, other than being pink, they like pink. I don't know. I really don't have anything against pink. This. It uses a sub-C connector on the hot end. And on the, the bottom part of the, the main computer, plugs in with a sub-C cable, or type-C cable. 
It also has you can plug in a BL touch and the sensor filament. Just plug them in. Don't have to open anything. Don't have to program anything. It's there. This is what goes up to the hot end. Plus the Bowden tube. That's it. Runs two fans. The hot end and the thermistor. The BL touch. And there's a bunch of LEDs in here. I think they show you. Let me skip past. I did skip past it. Let me go up. Uh -huh. There's the specs on it. I really don't care about the specs on it. Yeah, See, there's a bunch of LEDs in here as well. And then there's a fan on either side. And then the fan in the middle for cooling the hot end itself. Um, well, I guess I didn't. But anyway, trust me. There's a bunch of LEDs in there. And they change colors and you can change them on the control pad to whatever color you want. But I thought this sub-C, because I was thinking about going with a VGA cable and eliminating all of this. This cable, 15 bucks, took three months to get. Sub-C cables, type T, my Note 10 takes them. I can go to Best Buy, I can buy handfuls of them all day long for like seven bucks. Good quality data cables. Seven bucks each. And it, it's a phone cable. It's really thin. If it breaks, which I doubt it would, but if it did, throw it away, pop a new one on. No wiring, no mess, it just plugs in. I want to look into the potential of getting the breakout boards in here and doing this. But then I thought, well, can it actually handle the current from a 24 volt heater? Hmm. So, looked that up as well. Give me a second here. Somebody else actually did the math on this. If my mouse would respond. Okay, so on a, on a YouTube video by Teaching Tech, and I'll go back after that in a moment, the main part here is they're talking about the sub-C uh, cable. And then down here they get into the math of it. So there's two fans, or excuse me, three fans at 0.16 amps. 0.25 times 2 for the sensors. Um, the whole amperage is right around 2.5 amps-ish with a 24-volt hot end. The heater cartridge, 24-volt on that particular printer and on our Genons. So it's well within the 5 amps on these uh, little sub-C power packs, like the one for my note or my tablet. But uh, what this is actually going on over... So he's doing a comparison, just, you know, first hands-on, first thoughts. Holy cow, there's a ton of notes in here. I had to read through all of them to find the one I was trying to show you. There's the one for me, you know, really interested in this Type-C connection on the subboards. And I asked if he can show the connections, the breakout boards. Thanked him in advance. It's actually really, really good. If you haven't watched any of his videos, you definitely should. Um, but this one's the Ender 3 version 2. Um, versus the BiQ B1. And he's just doing, you know, first impressions. Not a real in-depth, you know, review of either one. Just kind of, hey, this is what I got. This is what it looks like. This is what it did. And then he's going to go into it. What I'm curious about is this sub-C cable. I want to see the breakout board here and on the back of the printer. Is it something we can just buy the parts and maybe solder in and use on these and then get rid of this whole damn cable system? I mean, that would be freaking awesome if we could do away with all this, plug a sub-C in, you know, run the cable up, and put a little stretchy cord on it, and you still use the cable chain if you wanted to, and then down and plug in. And like I said, I can get them at Best Buy. I think they're six foot, but obviously you can get longer. I know I've seen 10-foot ones. I don't know why you would need a 10-foot one, but hey, if you want it, you can get it. But I'm thinking a six foot one would be more than enough to go all the way to the top. Yeah, you know, way up there, 450 millimeters up. And then still run down the side and plug into the board. Yeah, I'm going to be looking really big into that uh, BiQ printer breakout boards and what options are available. As you can see here on mine, I'm not afraid to make modifications and changes. 
And if I could get rid of all these wires, think about that. How nice this would look. And granted, mine all has these JST connectors so that these fans die. They just do. They're silent, but they don't last long. They say 10,000 hours. I print a lot, but I don't think I've printed 10,000 hours yet. But anyway, I've replaced the fans a couple of times. Uh, none of the fans had the right connectors that match, soldering, and it just, no, I get rid of them. Plug the JSTs in there and we're done. Good to go. So I just wanted to share that bit. The cable itself, as is, is this little mod with these changes going to be, it's definitely better than stock. But it's still bending. I don't think it'll break as easily. I think I went almost a year, maybe a little over a year, haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. Now on the back, the hot end, make sure you put the strain relief gauge in there. This is annoying. Can't see it. Hopefully you can see that yellow. Yeah, you can see the yellow strain relief gauge I put in there. It's just bolted onto the screw thing. The wires are zip tied to that. And then I put the gauge over it. So it should be fine. Should be, being the operative word here. <laughs> um... A lot of people, I shouldn't say a lot, a few people have voiced concerns about, you know, wires breaking, 120 volts, causing a fire. You know, what's wrong with your breakers? Don't you have a surge protector? Mine's plugged into a surge protector. So if it's shorted, it's going to shut the power down and, you know, you'll have to reset it before you can plug it in again. Whatever. Yes, I still have the dual geared all metal BMG extruder back here. I put the extender on it. Really didn't pan out as well as I had hoped. Um, and with the stock one, yeah, it, you needed to get it out and it was fiddly. With this one, it's not so fiddly. I'm going to put it back in stock. I'm going to run my other brace um, like this one that runs on all four sides. The other one's hiding behind there, but it's definitely there. This one, you can see it way in the back. I just loosened it and dropped it down. I'll bring it back up when I move this over. And I think I'm done modding my chair on. I cannot think of anything else. You know, I I did the, the X-belt tensioner. If you haven't done this already, definitely do it. Don't over-tighten it. That's worse or just as bad as being loose. You know, so definitely don't over tighten it. Um, I did all the yellow. Pretty much everything you see in yellow, I did. The only things I did not. If you have a chair on, you already know. These come in yellow. I didn't do that. But all of these, I mean, all of them, I did everything else that you see that's yellow. Except for the, the paint on the mother, or the screen, obviously. see what else might uh okay let me change that there ain't no might i'm going to have a surprise here soon when i say soon i'm talking about the slow boat from china so three months from now my delta printer that i was going to make into a cnc slash laser printer slicer burner whatever i was going to sell it but i've got more mods in it than what you can buy a new one. You can buy a new one now for like, what, 200 bucks? I've got more than $200 in there. And as you can see, I already stole the extruder motor. Um, buying another extruder motor, you know, they're like 20 bucks, $25 each. So if I took the, the four extruder motors on there, the hotbed plate, the power supply, the hot end, the belts, I've already got 200 bucks right there. And that's not even counting the extruded aluminum 20 by 20 frame. And all my LEDs, my lights, the wiring. Yeah, I can't sell it for 200 and nobody's going to buy it from me for 300 So it's coming down. The linear rails, because um, these are the, the linear rail one. I am 
probably not going to do the bed, but that's still under debate. But I'm definitely going to put a linear rail across my y-axis and get rid of the wheels. Potentially I may put one of the, or one each of the slider rails, linear rails on either one of these for the bed. I don't know about that one yet. I've honestly not had any issues. But I've got them. I'm going to tear it down for parts. What else am I going to do with them? But yeah, I'm probably definitely going to be doing the X carriage on a linear rail. And those are the really, really good ones before linear rails even became popular. Uh, I think the ones I have, I want to say they're 200 millimeter and they're the H blocks. So a rail and one block, I think if you were to buy off Banggood, is like 80 bucks for this quality one that I have. It's got three of them in there. Like I said, I can't sell the printer for 200 bucks. And nobody that can buy it for 200 bucks is going to pay me what I want for it. If you know what I got, you know what it's worth, make me an offer. Otherwise, it's going to be parts, which is sad. That was my very first printer. I learned a lot. Not saying not to, but getting a Delta printer for your very first printer, I don't recommend that. <laughs> learned a lot. None of it applies to my Chiron or any other printer I'm going to get. Um, I think the next one I want to get, I've gone from a Delta to a Cartesian. I think the next one I want to do is a, a Core XY. Um, so yeah, if my Delta printer's not over there, I would have room for another printer, wouldn't I? I have to see what happens. Oh yeah, and then all my, uh, I can't see them up there, all the bracing I did. Let's see if I can do a bracing, see that one. Yeah. All the bracings I did on all three towers. Did a lot of work, a lot of modifications to that printer. It prints fabulous. It's just, you know, it's a 230 millimeter circle. And I think it only goes 200 millimeters high. No. It goes actually, it's like 187 millimeters high with the bed changes I made with the hot end and stuff. Because it doesn't actually come with a hot bed. So I think it's like right around 187 build height. And then a 230, no, 210 millimeter circle. And it actually prints very well. I don't have any problems with it at all, whatsoever. But back to this gym, cable chain. I'll be trying this out. Obviously, those of you who watch my channel are going to know if I have any issues, because I'm going to be a bitching. But uh, the stock one lasted just over a year. I expect this one to last at least three to four times longer, because this bend is so gradual. And by then, I'll already have a spare. If not, the breakout sub-C boards from the BiQ B1, if I can get those breakout boards and modify them into this and get rid of the spaghetti, and then just a plug and play, oh, that would be so amazing. Fingers crossed.